Hi, I'm Paul Roberts, and this is Conscious Counseling 101. How to be a guru, prophet, a heightened conscious individual. I'm not gonna bend spoons, I'm not gonna levitate, I'm not gonna leave my body, but if you'll stay with me during this video presentation, by the end, I will show you how you can do things that are even greater than those things, and what those things even symbolize and mean in the first place. Let's pretend I don't know anything. That's not too much of a departure from what the reality is. I really don't know anything, but here's the catcher. You don't know anything either. Wow, what am I saying here? Let's focus. Where is the power from knowing that I can't know anything? Where does that power come from? What does it give you? Well, for one thing, it helps you to not be influenced by any other person because you know inherently that you know nothing. You admit that to yourself and then you also know that no one else knows anything. That's very crucial because when you know that, all the false appearances that everybody might give to you, that they know more or have more to offer you than what you have on your own, fall away. When those things fall away, you're left with nothing. You're left realizing the power you have is also your weakness. You don't know anything. You know no one else knows anything. But what do you do now? I want to break through barriers and reach people in ways I haven't before. I have to be pure. I have to be able to give somebody something of value without even knowing that it's of value. But knowing from where I come from, being so unknowing is so rare that there's a value there because you can't find it in anyone else. And when you do find it in yourself and you analyze and you spend time exploring it, you meditate. You don't go off in another world. You don't wear a robe and have long hair and walk away from society or be a monk or fly through the sky or leave your body or perform magical feats. Because if you did those things and if you could do them in the physical realm, all you'd really be doing is gaining something in the eyes of others in the physical realm. And there your heart and your mind would be. And as soon as you enter that, you become trapped. You also benefit. Let's look at the physical realm and compare it with the non-physical or unknown realm. The non-physical or unknown realm may not exist, or it may. It has limitless possibilities, limitless, infinite, or none. The physical realm is obvious. Everything's in front of you. Your body, you examine it from a young age, can feel pleasure and pain. You develop from your upbringing, nature, nurture, whatever, the ideas of what you'd like versus what you'd not like. This is different for everybody. But you start to think in the physical realm, what do I need to do in order to get those things? What would be wise and prudent for me? Well, the first thing I notice is I didn't choose to be here. I don't know where I came from. If I stand here long enough, I'll realize I'll get tired of standing. If it gets cold, I'll get cold and realize I need to warm somehow. I'll get hungry. I'll have to take care of those things or not. There's something inside of me that's driving me towards self-preservation, towards my wonder, towards feeling good, thinking positively, finding a way that that makes me feel, hey, that's cool. And you know, the bad things, we don't like those, but maybe we can lessen those, make them go away. Maybe through people that we seek out, we can learn about this realm and find ways to do well in it so that we can have more of what we'd like to see and less of what we'd not like to experience. If we only look at this realm and search for wisdom and learnedness, one of the first things we'll do, even before we're conscious of it, of course, because we all come in as youngsters, 
Maybe one day that won't be. Maybe well, one day we'll have clones or something like that. But we came in as youngsters. So the first thing we did is we saw those that were there before us. We observed them. We took from them because we must. We couldn't fend for ourselves. We became attached to them. We needed them. We then, philosophically, in our attempt to learn, gained what we could from observing them. We didn't know where the lines were of what is survival, what is philosophical, what is religious, what is human failure, and things they stumble upon, what makes them brilliant or wise and make gains. We didn't know these things at first. So we charged into finding a way as we grew to allow for what we could learn from them to supply our own needs, to learn to architect our own environment and our own life, to find a way to keep the good things that we like with us close to experience and to suppress the bad things. We loved that people gave us things, those few loved ones. We hated that some seemed to do us wrong. We start to carve our personality. We say, hmm, that person that loves me seems to have, I'd like to be like that. That person that doesn't like me, they seem to also have they have some kind of power. I can maybe learn from that too. Wanting what the person that you feel is loving you has is selfishness and lack of insight. Putting up some kind of a protective mechanism against somebody that means you harm is, is an instinctual human response. Neither one of those is what real love is. What real love would be, would be to say, I realize my limitations in this physical realm. I realize what I want and how I'd like to accumulate it. I realize that I know nothing. I realize that no one else knows anything. I realize that they have all the same things that I have, or have the potential to have all the same things as I have. I may have something above some of them or I may be subservient to others. I realize I have a place in society. When I work my architecture of my life, and I work that place, and I learn to manipulate it, what falls off, whether I know it or not, onto others, is either love or evil. Because I see the things hitting me as either nurturing, loving, or evil. But just because I'm nurtured doesn't mean that that's given out of love. And just because I'm hated or made to feel poorly doesn't mean that's given out of evil. There could be other things affecting those two things. I don't know. And I can't get into somebody else's head and figure it out for them. Every single person may be different. Whatever made those people may respond with them and correlate thoughts in their minds or with them in some different way or not at all. It may just appear to us that something's happening in them or in the world that we don't understand. But we know that we need. And we know that if we don't act on our need and learn how to perform certain tasks in the physical realm, we'll have less goodness, more suffering, and our needs will not be fulfilled in the way that we choose to have them fulfilled. How we choose from that point to start operating with everything we encounter will determine whether or not we are loving or evil. What quotient is there of each of those? It will determine how much value we place in the limited known and seen 
that can provide actual things we can experience in this world. And how much faith or hope we place in something that may not be there, but may be limitless. Where we fall on that line, religiously, has been being thought about through the ages we can learn from these people that we learn from. It's been called many things by various philosophers, wise men, gurus, religions, things that have not ever been seen, things that aren't known but we attempt to know. We try to use those like things we can bring into ourselves and get a better feeling for what everything is all about and what the purpose of life is. The quotient for love and evil lies within our hands and what we go after or what motivates us first. In the Bible, you heard about how people would serve idols. In the physical realm, you'd see people running after power and greed, money, things that give them the ability to procure the things they'd like to have for themselves and others in this world. What makes someone a guru rise above all these things? Change something that looks so firm, bend it to a will. What makes somebody move mountains, whether physical or otherwise? You've never seen anybody be verifiably able to predict the future. You've never seen anybody fly or bend or manipulate a physical object with their mind. But they use symbols, some of them do, and some make claims that they can. But I say to you, I won't fall victim to that because I know I can't. And so therefore, because I don't know, they don't know either and they can't. So how do I know that I can rise to another level? How do I know that? Because in the non-physical realm of things that can't be proven, if I take the time to believe in those things from wherever I come from, and I find a way to work those realms like I do the physical realm to produce my physical needs and find a way to keep that going, if I can produce any results in the non-physical realm, I can start to compare the two. I can say, I can't move that mountain. In the physical world, what would you visualize? Lots of people with shovels, bulldozers, bombs, dynamite, excavators, you know, things like that. Moving a mountain. In the non-physical world, what would you picture? Something that doesn't require physicality, but that can make the same change of taking something that seems in, insurmountable, immovable, and helping it to grow or move or change and become something else. Having yourself go above that, hover over that, master that, and have the effects not only in your mentality, your spirituality, your overall consciousness of what's going on, but bringing it back into this physical realm, finding real physical changes from the mentality and implementing different strategies about the way you utilize your visions, your perspectives, your love, your understanding of hate and evil, your desire for the things of this world being all-consuming or just something that you have to do because you wouldn't be here if you didn't. Well, these balances can be learned from in a non-physical realm. Some people call it meditation. Some people say you have to look a certain way, stand a certain way, cross your legs, have to have a certain experience, some kind of euphoric thing. Or if you go into some churches, you have to raise your hands a certain way, you have to speak a certain way in order to feel like something's happened. But the truth is, if you're truthful to yourself and you know you know nothing, but yet you explore the non-physical realm in the same way that you explored the physical realm, you'll find new products come out of those areas to your consciousness that are real 
and they make real differences here. This isn't learnedness. This isn't a recipe. This is something that you can't see, but you can experience it or feel like you're experiencing it and implement it with your real world challenges and make it real. Make it make changes. When you see all the others that aren't choosing to do these things or just appear like they're embracing the physical realm or maybe they're doing it so loftily that you can't even relate or that they don't take the time to relate to you. Are they truly loving you? If they're supposedly gaining all this and they can't find a way to transfer it to you? Are those in power that have something over you truly loving you just because they throw you some things that you need to get by? I don't think either one of them is. The physical people, the non-physical people, the religious leaders, I don't think any of them are really loving you. They're causing an outcome for themselves that they're totally entranced by and entrapped by and all about. And you're an afterthought. If you do anything, think about this. If you do anything and you make every other thing that you know and feel and understand and have learned and have thrown out or held dear, if you push anything down to bring yourself up to cause anybody else a negative experience. You're not loving. You have to ask yourself, would you want someone manipulating you in that way? If you wouldn't, then you must go on your journey not manipulating anybody in a negative way like that either. Otherwise your journey is not only not worth it for yourself, but it's faulty from the first step. To be a guru is to understand these things, to operate with these things, to grow with these things, to learn to teach and share these things for the benefit of others, to help people that are stumbling because of faulty notions, power plays, things of this world that have them entrapped, vices, whatever it may be, that each individual can't get past on their own to help to see what that is, find what the aid would be for that person, freely offer it, freely, because you love and you want to be able to do that. Of course, you must also do what you have to do in this physical realm to maintain your body and your mind. Drink water, eat food, rest, shelter yourself, clothe yourself, congregate with people, see what popular culture is about and what makes people think the ways that they do, what are they influenced by, what are the large systems over everything, not only in governments but in advertising, data collection, what are they trying to achieve? The fact that they give you something while they take something is a trade-off that you might not even understand. If you just voluntarily go for whatever it is and you seek to find nothing else but just sign on, you're a sheep and you can be led to the slaughter. You can put your faith in man and lose your way. Maybe you never even found your way. Maybe you were lost from day one. Maybe the vices and weights of mankind that you allow into your life, that you can never gain the upper heightened conscious to even see, let alone throw off and fight against. Maybe those things are just too much. But the reason I'm making this video is, if any of the things I'm saying resonate at all, it's because I've lived in existence as what I'm talking about, but it's real. It's not elevated in any way to make myself feel greater. I'm not gonna charge and elevate myself to something larger so that others would want it, so that I can then again embrace the physical realm. I'm gonna be aware of all these things every day and live my life with the memory of them and filter what I'm learning and growing through 
by not forgetting these things. If you want to be a prophet, what you can do is you can analyze what's happening and project where that will go to by understanding the physical realm, embracing it, studying it, and having to use it. Let's face it, we have to all use it to some extent by understanding those that think they're reaching out so far and they're so sure that what they found is something greater than anyone else could find and, and they, they try to cash in to sell it to you. Even some of the evangelists, they say it's free, you can make an offering. How much of that is really being cashed in on to keep a, a, a mindset going in a certain way that if anybody falls outside of it in any way, it can't be attempted to be understood or valued, but it must be pushed down because that won't continue the way, the way they think it should be. It'll inhibit it. That's not love, that's not faith, that's not confidence in the greater things that the Creator would have. That is, again, like every other thing you see that man contrives, every other thing attempting to get into the non-physical realm and in this world and the systems that they make, in every way that's of those same types of things. A guru can get past those things by seeing that he knows not and therefore knowing that they do not know. He's empowered, but he then doesn't use the power to push down and make less. He uses what he gains to guide and help others that haven't gained it as well as himself. And to project where they would be going and share it with them, should they want to hear, as a prophetic example of a forecast that their insights will bring them without love and a larger consciousness of both the physical and the non-physical realm. The propheticness happens when we can see it ourselves and we can guide what's happening ourselves. But once we see it and we have it and we understand it, it's not a knowing. It's a logical end. There are many logical ends because the probability of where this physical realm can go and where this non-physical realm can go is not endless for the physical realm, but it is something. We have to have empathy for others and realize that they don't know, especially when they think they know. Because when they think they know, they're more vulnerable because there's very little chance of fluidity, of examining all things and seeing things from different perspectives. That's why here at Conscious Counseling, I emphasize the value and need for perspective counseling. Because by changing your point of view from wherever you are and showing that there's another way or there's more, all of a sudden, if I can do something that helps you to realize that there's any validity to what I'm saying at all, you're going to take the time to look. If I can't do anything to help you realize validity to anything that I say, you won't take the time to look. And furthermore, you won't take the time to believe that there's even an idea that I could even offer anything. So what do I do? If I was financially motivated, I'd find a way to build myself up so that I can make a gain as if I'm giving something that can be received a financial contribution. Or I'll, in the non-physical realm or the religious realm, I'll force people to believe that if they don't see what I see, they must be missing something and therefore they could suffer a lesser fate than they would have had otherwise. Maybe even a tragic fate. But I don't want to do those things. So what do I spend my time doing? What do I spend all my time in life doing? What am I doing here? What am I doing talking to you? What does all this mean? I'm breaking the cycle. I'm not doing either of the extremes, any of the extremes. I'm finding a, a way that's different, not extreme, but 
middle. And because extremes are norm, the middle is extreme. It's only extreme if you do tallies. It's not extreme once you see it and you're there and you try to do something with love and wisdom and guidance and helping benefit anybody that might see without taking anything because it's so rare. That's not the way the world works. Everything's a give and take, like I explained earlier. When you're trying to figure out how things work, and you want more goodness, more joy and pleasure while buffering away the negatives. You'll learn techniques from a very early age. And by the time you're aware of anything real, those techniques will be so inculcated into you that you'll have to relearn. You'll have to push those things away and relearn to become a new person. Most people don't. Some people could look at this as being called finding a new way or being born again. You've heard those things. But a lot of times it's hollow words, hollow ideas. What makes them genuine is actually spending your time having this be your motivating factor, having this be how you operate in life and what you draw in by it, and what you gain, and how you use what you gain. Now I said in the beginning of this video that if you took the time and went down this road with me, you'd be doing more things than just bending spoons, levitating, going outside your body, moving mountains. You will. I'm not going to do it in the physical realm, even if I believe it could possibly be done. I'm going to do it in a realm that makes things happen that unfortunately I can't share any better than I have here today. And in the physical realm, whatever I find in my midst that's a problem, I'm going to move it out of the way, I'm going to bend it out of the way, I'm going to thrust it out of the way, I'm going to hover over it. I am going to get past it in real time, in the real world, by my exploratory guru type of life heightened conscious outlook. And I can help you and teach you to do that for no cost, just because I know that we should be. Because I don't know, and because I didn't know, I came to understand why the value of it is so great. It can't even be seen or shown, so it can't be sold. It can't be given, so it can't be taken. But it can be real and make real results like the symbols that a guru has used over the years. You may think of some of them in your mind's eye. You might kind of know what I mean. Or you might have gone down that road yourself at one time or another and you know all the symbols, more than I do even. <laughs> but they're just that, symbols. What I'm talking about won't require symbols because the physical realm doesn't contain these symbols. If there's anything of value to the symbols, it's just trying to relate through time as another artist would what I'm talking about here and put it into a symbol that they think people maybe can understand. And then as they transform it into their own life's existence, the symbols make real things happen. And if there's something that you can't handle and that you can't make go away, you can see it in a different way gain peace and not let it harm and bother you. Look, I'd like to fly. It sounds fun, right? I have to walk. I accept that. I accept that I have to walk. By my willingness to walk, by my willingness to be who I can be while I'm walking, while I'm this physical being, when I take on something larger than myself, I can deal with it without it dealing with and managing me. I can manage it, whatever it is. Practical, simple little ABC things would be vices. Things that you let consume your life and you can't seem to get past. Those are the easy things. Transfer that to something so large you can't seem to do anything about it. You can still do something about your perception of it, your reaction to it, and perhaps make mountains move 
where the thing actually will change it. I can't make any promises there. I'm certainly not gonna sell anything like that. I like to remain hopeful and ever heightening in my conscious. Maybe I won't see that within my limited days here. Maybe it will really exist. Maybe it isn't meant to exist. Maybe it won't. Maybe those are things reserved for the non-physical realm or the imagination. All I know for real is that I don't know anything and I'm empowered by that because I know that no one else does and therefore I can rise and you can too.